Good afternoon. My name is Jason Clean, and I'm an assistant executive director with the Department of Cannabis Regulation. Today, we're going to go over the department's annual licensing application process. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I just want to give you a brief overview of how we're prioritizing the review of annual license applications. The priority is given to existing businesses that have state provisional licenses, and we're prioritizing based on licenses that expire on or after July 1st of 2024. Um, the state gives folks the opportunity to renew a provisional license through the end of calendar year 2024. So a business that renews their provisional license in June of 2024 will have a provisional license that's valid through June of 2025. We picked July 1st as kind of the starting date because the folks that we're deeming complete now and sending through the commission process their records will be deemed complete and they may be eligible to get an annual license um, sometime in late May, early June. So it just made sense for us to have the first tranche be for July 1st moving forward. Um, we're anticipating that we're going to be able to get through our provisional licensees um, before June of 2025, and hopefully we'll be able to move through as many as possible before the end of the calendar year. Once we've addressed the existing businesses, we'll be looking to businesses that do not have a state provisional license for non-retail and delivery activities. And then third, we'll be looking to the retail storefront businesses that don't have an existing state provisional license because the retail storefront businesses have to go through a community meeting and a public hearing process as well. In order to deem an application complete, there's a number of fees that have to be paid by the applicant or licensee. Some of these fees may be eligible for a fee waiver through the local jurisdiction assistance grant program. We have a budget modification pending with the Department of Cannabis Control asking for them to verify which fees may be waived using those grant funds. Um, they've acknowledged that the categorical exemption fee is an eligible fee. Um, we're still waiting for feedback on the publication fees, the notice fees, the community meetings, the public hearings, and whether or not um, grant funds can be utilized to cover those fees. Um, so right now what we're doing is we're providing fee deferrals for records that are would otherwise be eligible to get a notice of complete application so we can start moving them forward while we wait for the Department of Cannabis Control to tell us what the final list of fees that can be waived is. Um, if DCC determines that the fees are not eligible for grant, um, the applicant and licensee will be invoiced for the fees and they'll be due within 30 days of the date of invoice. Once we've deferred the fees for the annual licensing process and determine that the application is deemed filed, we're issuing a notice of complete application. Um, here's a sample of the notice of complete application for a retail storefront business. As we deem the record um, complete, we're identifying when we're gonna schedule the community meeting and the public hearing date. The notices are going to be pre-populated with this information, and it's going to be the same information that gets sent to the neighbor, the, the council, council district, the closest neighborhood council, the business improvement district, if applicable, the community plan, you know, the stakeholders within the community plan area, and then the mail notice will go to owners and occupants within 700 feet of the project location. So... As we're issuing these notices of complete application, we're finalizing the documentation to go out to the different parties, and we're making sure everything is ready to go before we actually send out a notice of complete application. The first 16 um, retail storefront businesses received their notice of complete application on January 29th of 2024. And those records will be going to a community meeting on Thursday, March 14th. For the non-retail businesses, we're not required to do community meetings nor do public hearings. So once we've issued the notice of complete application and we've prepared the staff report, those will be transmitted to the director for her review and approval. 
for our non-retail businesses, once we've issued the notice of complete application, DCR will develop a staff report and then make a recommendation to the director to either grant or deny the annual license. If the director grants the annual license, we'll file a notice of exemption, um, if applicable, with the county. And then that will reduce the appeal period from 180 days down to 35 days once the NOE has been filed. And then, of course, if there's no appeals that are filed, um, DCR will be in a position to issue its annual license um, after the close of the 35-day appeal period. When we file the notices of exemption with the county, we're also transmitting the notice of exemption to the state's Department of Cannabis Control so that they can begin to prepare and finalize the state annual license for final review. For the retail storefront businesses, um, there's outreach, community meetings, and public hearings that get folded into the process. So once we've issued a notice of complete application, the applicant needs to reach out to their neighborhood council within 10 days and offer to meet. Also within 10 days, the DCR needs to reach out to the council district, the neighborhood council, the business improvement district if applicable, and let them know that the application has been deemed complete. We're also posting notice on our website, and we're providing copies of the notices that get sent as well as on our website. So bear with me, and I'm going to transition over to our website. So on the department's website, under the licensing section, we have public notice. So if you go to the public notice page, you'll see the different types of notices that um, the department prepares. We have a section for, of course, public convenience or necessity process, but we also have the new section for notices of complete application. So for the retail storefront businesses, you'll see the list of businesses that have received their notice of complete application. Um, the information that pertains to the location. If you scroll over on the table, you'll also be able to see um, when we've got the virtual community meeting scheduled and then when we're going to conduct the public hearing before the Cannabis Regulation Commission. And then linked to the applicant name, you'll be able to see um, the letter that went out to the applicant that also got emailed to the council offices the neighborhood council, and if applicable, the business improvement district. And this will also have the information that relates to the community meeting and to the public hearing date for the Cannabis Regulation Commission. This information is also mailed out to owners and applicants or owners and occupants within 700 feet of the project location. And those mailings are being conducted by the Department of General Services. DCR is doing the notice all at the same time one, to reduce the cost to the applicant, and then two, to also give um, clarity to the process in terms of when an application will be scheduled for its community meeting and when it will go before the Cannabis Regulation Commission for its public hearing. We want folks to have advanced knowledge of when these things are going to happen so they, they can prepare accordingly. So at the virtual community meeting, um, we have to conduct it within 45 days of issuing the notice of complete application, and we have to provide at least 20 days advance notice, which is why as we're sending out those notices of complete application, we're informing you when we're going to schedule a community meeting. We're also telling you when we're going to schedule you for a public hearing so that that information can go out as quickly as possible. We're doing the notice once because the code says we have to do at least 20 days in advance. So if we provide notice of the Cannabis Regulation Commission hearing 60 days in advance, 45 days in advance, it still complies with the code and it gets the information out there as early as possible. At the community meeting, um, members of the public, including the applicant, will have up to two minutes to provide 
um, comment as it relates to a particular record or application. They can let us know if they're for the project, against the project, and provide um, input. We've also created a JOT form to correct uh, to collect written testimony from members of the public that relate to the projects. Um, the JOT forms for particular applications will be open through midnight on the day of the community meeting. Um, after the community meeting has concluded, um, through the end of that day, we can get um, additional written testimony. Um, but at midnight, we will no longer collect written testimony as it relates to the community meeting process because we have to summarize the information that was collected and presented at the community meeting to prepare the staff report. That staff report will then be transmitted to the Cannabis Regulation Commission for their consideration. The applicant will have an opportunity to address the commission if they so choose. The commission may ask DCR staff to provide feedback on its recommendation or do a quick presentation. And then, of course, the Cannabis Regulation Commission will also take um, public comment as part of the public hearing process. If the Cannabis Regulation Commission approves the issuance of an annual license for the retail store for an activity, we'll go down and we'll file a notice of exemption if that's the clearing environmental document with the county clerk to reduce the um, CEQA appeal period from 180 days down to 35 days. And then, of course, following the 35-day appeal period, if no appeals are filed or we've adjudicated those appeals, we'll be in a position to issue an annual license. On this page, we've kind of got a draft of what the proposed hearing calendar was going to look like. Um, you can see in the blue column when we're transmitting files to general services. Um, the Department of General Services conducts the mailing for DCR, and it's really the mailing date that drives whether or not we'll be able to conduct the community meetings and the commission meetings as intended, because we do, of course, have to provide at least 20 days notice in advance of the community meeting and the commission hearing. And then working backwards, you know, the noticing that goes into what we give to GSD is similar to the notice that we also provide to the council offices and the neighborhood council. So we make sure that GSD has the information and then they can commit to the column just to the right, which is when the mailings would actually go out in order to allow for us to do the community meetings on the and the commission meetings on the dates we have scheduled. Um, these are all drafts. So the first community meeting is going to be next Thursday. On a go forward basis, we're going to do the community meetings on a Friday when the licensing team is on so that they can staff the community meetings. And then, of course, the Cannabis Regulation Commission meets on the first and third Thursdays um, of every month. So those meetings are kind of fixed. Um, I showed folks where the information for the notice of complete applications is located on the website. Um, this is a great resource for members of the public and folks that may not be directly impacted by our project or receive mail notice. So um, if individuals are interested in um, which applications have been complete, when things are going to be scheduled for community meetings or for the hearings, um, the website will always have the most up-to-date information, and that's the best resource for folks that are not actually getting the physical notice. This is a sample of what the mailed notice looks like. Um, you can see that it gets populated with the owner or occupant information, the mailing address, and then we populate it with information that's related to the application record, the activities that are being applied for the council district, the community plan area. Um, and then it does provide both the community meeting date and the public hearing date. Um, and it provides the JOT form where we collect the written testimony for the community meeting if folks are unable to attend the virtual community meeting. So this is what the template looks like. We're only required to do the mail notice for the retail storefront businesses. So if you're applying for the delivery activity or non-retail activities, um, you won't be seeing the mail notice, nor do you have to actually post notice at your location. Um, this next piece is the posted notice that a retail storefront business would post at their business premises location. Um, 
it would be in at least 20 point font and it would include the information related to the community meeting as well as the public hearing date. As we prepare the notice um, that goes out, we are providing retail storefront businesses with the copy of the posted notice that they'll have to put up at their physical location. And kind of to address some of the questions that have come in in terms of what the process looks like after we've issued that notice of complete application, um, folks are gonna get that posted notice and it's gonna have to be printed on at least 11 by 17 paper. Um, the business is required to post it in a conspicuous place on the business premises immediately. Um, once it's posted, we ask for you to take a photograph and send us an email letting us know that it's been posted so that we can add that to your file so that we know that you've posted the required notice. And then the code requires you to print and post the notice as soon as you get it. So we're trying to send out the notices to you in one batch so that you have all of the information necessary to meet the posted notice and then to have the notice to send to the neighborhood council when you offer to um, appear before them or answer their questions or meet with them. And then of course, so that your stakeholders will have the opportunity to attend the community meetings and the public hearings as described. When you contact the neighborhood council, um, you're supposed to do that within 10 days of receiving your notice of complete application. Again, um, if you email them and you offer to meet with them, sending us proof of that email, um, we can upload it to your record. Um, that's super helpful. If you do agree and attend one of the neighborhood council meetings, sending us a copy of the meeting minutes is helpful as well. Um, we just want to have some kind of evidence that you've reached out to them and you've offered to meet. Um, you do have to make a good faith effort to offer to meet with them. Um, but if you're not able to meet with them, they want to meet with you after we've done the community meeting or the Cannabis Regulation Commission has considered it, it's not going to affect the processing of your annual license application or the hearing dates. If you fail to um, offer to meet with them, that will be noted when we send the report to the Cannabis Regulation Commission. For the community meeting, the purpose of the community meeting is just to gather input from the public related to your application. Um, there's not going to be any discussion about the application. There's not going to be any decisions made regarding the application at the meeting. And we're not going to be responding to comments or questions during the meeting. It's really an open mic for members of the public to let the department know whether or not they're for or against a project and provide oral and written testimony to the department so that it can be included in the staff report. Notice of that community meeting does get mailed to the owners of occup and occupants of the properties within 700 feet of the property line of the proposed business premises location. And when we issue the notice of complete application, we're also providing notice to the neighborhood council, the business improvement district, if applicable, and the council office. So we're keeping everybody in the loop in addition to the applicant reaching out and communicating with different um, policy makers and groups. During the community meeting, members of the public will be afforded two minutes to provide oral testimony, time permitting. We have a morning session and an afternoon session. We have records dedicated to each of the two sessions, and we have a three hour block of time for folks to provide that oral testimony um, on the community meeting date. So folks will be taken on a first come first serve basis and applicants and designated representatives for the applicant would get the same two minutes at this meeting um, as any other member of the public. Really, this is just an opportunity for staff to get public input so that we can include it in the staff report that would go to the Cannabis Regulation Commission for further consideration. After the community meeting, um, staff are going to be summarizing what was heard and what was given um, into the staff report that gets transmitted to the, um, the Cannabis Regulation Commission for the public hearing. At the Cannabis Regulation Commission um, hearing, 
it's going to be in person. It's a public hearing. The Cannabis Regulation Commission will decide whether to issue the commercial cannabis license after considering DCR's recommendations about the application, the written summary of the community meeting, um, notes that are prepared by DCR, the record that is before the commission, and any additional written information or oral testimony that's timely provided to the commission. Um, on DCR's website, there are the commission's rules and operating procedures, which outline when information can be transmitted, how much information can be transmitted, because of course the commissioners need to be able to consume and review this information in advance of the hearing. So if you have any questions about the different operating procedures, I would refer you to the website. And then of course you can email DCR um, licensing at cannabis. Uh, <clears throat> DCR licensing at lecity.org if you have any questions about the process. During the public hearing, the applicant or its authorized representatives will have up to 10 minutes to make an oral presentation regarding their application. You're not required to make a presentation to the commission. It's an option for you. We strongly re recommend that if you are going to designate a representative to speak on your behalf, that they attend the public hearing in person so that they can make the oral testimony um, and then provide any additional information to the commissioners that may supplement the record that also has to, of course, be submitted in advance of the commission meeting. The commission may also ask DCR to testify at the hearing and answer questions related to the record. After the CRC hearing, if CRC decides to grant the annual license, again, if we determine that the project is exempt under CEQA, um, we'll go ahead and file the notice of exemption with the county clerk to reduce the appeal period from 180 days down to 35 days. And then, of course, if there's no appeal, we'll be in a position to issue the annual license. Um, once you've been issued the annual license, you know, to the extent that you have the correct certificate of occupancy, you've got your health permits, you've got all of your other necessary permits, um, you would be able to request a final inspection to pursue your operating permit. Um, you cannot pursue your operating permit until you've been issued the annual license. And then, of course, if the Cannabis Regulation Commission does not grant the annual license, um, the applicant has the opportunity to file an appeal to the city council. And the decision to deny the issuance of an annual license must be filed within 15 days. Otherwise, the decision is deemed filed if it's not, if an appeal is not received within 15 days. A uh, final denial of the annual license after the exhaustion of any administrative appeals will terminate any act of temporary approval. So for businesses that have received temporary approval, if your annual license is denied, once you've exhausted the administrative appeals, if the denial is sustained, it will terminate any act of temporary approval and you will have to stop operating. And that gets us to the end of the presentation. Um, and I know that folks had submitted questions in advance, so we can go ahead and start answering questions. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start with our first question. Um, and hello, Jason. Um, from Ariel C., what types of modifications won't be allowed after a notice of complete application is issued? So relocations, entity substitutions, any change to the application, the premises diagram, the activities on the record will not be considered once a notice of complete application is issued. Um, I think the easiest way to answer the question is businesses may continue to update the legal business entity record, which lists the owners, the primary personnel, and other contacts on the record. In order to submit a modification on the ELBER, it does have to be considered active. And then we can just review the modification request on the ELBER 
um, as submitted to determine if it complies with the code. Otherwise, all other modifications um, will not be considered once an application has been deemed complete. And the next question is related also from um, Ariel. How does a licensee relocate their business premises after receiving a notice of complete application? Um, they cannot submit a relocation request until an annual license is issued. Um, our next question from uh, Leah S. Please describe in more detail what kind of proof we need to submit that we contacted our neighborhood council and hosted a meeting if they requested. The, the easiest proof is just to provide a copy of the email that you sent to the neighborhood council, letting them know that your application was deemed complete and you're offering to meet with them. Um, if they do take you up on the meeting, um, providing an agenda or meeting minutes, or the if you present before the full neighborhood council a copy of the agenda, um, that is helpful. But at a minimum, just please provide a copy of the email that you sent to the neighborhood council, letting them know that your application was deemed complete and you're offering the meet. Uh, Kimberly S. asks, I have, sub I have submitted all my documents. What do I do next? I'm assuming it's application related documents. You know, ultimately, um, staff are reviewing applications to determine if they're deemed filed. And then if all of the documents are there, they're reviewing them for compliance with the municipal code. Um, once we've determined that the application is complete and all of the related records are ready to go, you would receive a notice of complete application. From Logan F., for those companies that are CEQA exempt, why are they still processing for an annual? The, the local process is a discretionary process, and the California Environmental Quality Act applies to discretionary projects. So it's reviewing the application and then staff making the recommendation as to whether or not the project qualifies for some type of categorical exemption is one component of it. The second component of it is because it's a discretionary action, the, the decision maker, the director for most activities or the commission for the retail storefront activities has to review the environmental analysis prepared by staff. And then if they agree with the analysis, adopt those findings in conjunction with adopting the discretionary action to issue the annual license. So nobody gets a cannabis license within the city of Los Angeles as a statutory requirement. It's not by right. Everything comes through a discretionary process and CEQA unfortunately is part of that discretionary process. So just because we determine that a project may be exempt from CEQA, there's a categorical exemption that would apply. Um, it doesn't mean that the decision maker who's actually gonna review that final application is gonna agree with that staff analysis. Thanks, Jason. Um, the next question also from Logan F. Is there an average turnaround time for annual license application or is it on a case by case basis? The, the turnaround will vary activity to activity, um, but generally um, 90 to 180 days from the date that you receive your notice of complete application is when um, the annual licensing process would be complete, concluded. Uh, Yelena K asks, will the applicant have a set amount of time to present at the commission hearing or is the applicant bound by the same public comment time limit? The applicant can have up to 10 minutes 
to present their project at the um, Cannabis Regulation Commission meeting. Leo E. asks, in which stage of the process does a retail storefront type 10 license count as a community plan spot? Is it temporary approval or do you actually have to open? It's when a license is issued. So when DCR issues temporary approval or an annual license for the retail storefront activity, um, it counts against the number of licenses that DCR may issue within that community plan area. And then of course, once we've issued the finite number of licenses we can issue without council consideration, all further applications would be referred um, to the city council through the public convenience or necessity process. A uh, question from Michelle G. Can retail applicants who have not been given an initial inspection date defer all payments until after the site has been approved? I mean, the simplest answer to the question is no, the, the deferrals are not into perpetuity. So there is some finite period of time between when a deferral is granted and when the fees would have to be paid. Uh, from Molly P, how can retailers get on the list published by DCR as ready for site evaluation? And is there a different process for those with a uh, certificate of occupancy or those on the list for a uh, public health permit? So the there's a list of retail locations on the DCR website on the compliance page that have been verified by building and safety to have an existing certificate of occupancy for the retail activity. So if the location is not on that list, the applicant is gonna to have to go to building and safety, provide plans to get the necessary permit to have the certificate of occupancy reflect that retail activity. Um, and then the building and safety website will have all of the requirements for their plan check process. If you don't have a certificate of occupancy that matches the activity, the public health department is not going to be in a position to do the site evaluation and consider granting you the health permit because they require departments like building and safety and fire to clear your project and say you've met all of their requirements before they'll actually accept you into the program and issue a health permit. So hopefully that helps with the question. Thanks, Jason. The next question, um, we had two people asking similar questions, Mike S and Molly P. Um, can you please walk us through the, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what, retailers are required to do for and during the upcoming community and commission meetings? Should the licensee present? Should they or can they give a presentation? So for the community meetings, those are all done virtually. And the applicant will have the same two minutes to provide input as it relates to their project as any other member of the public. And it could be, you know, basically we'll take public comment on a first come first serve basis. So if owners of the applicant, employees of the applicant, um, they want to call in and provide um, oral testimony, um, they're welcome to. We'll take the comment on a first come first serve basis. Folks will have two minutes and then we'll go to the next speaker and then we'll just keep repeating until we're we're done with that community meeting session. When we actually do the public hearing for the Cannabis Regulation Commission, the applicant will have up to 10 minutes to present their project um, to the commission. Um, they're not required to present their project. Um, they're not required to take all 10 minutes, but they have up to 10 minutes if they want. The applicant can have owners present the information. They could have their authorized agent pro provide the information, a consultant. They could give us a letter notifying us that business A or person A is 
delegated to provide the presentation. And then we'll make sure that that presenter has the business's 10 minutes to present you know, their case to the commission. So in a summary, for the community meeting, the applicant is like any other member of the public, um, two minutes to speak. Um, folks associated with the applicant can call in and provide their community feedback at the Cannabis Regulation Commission. If the applicant wants to present their project to the commission, they can have up to 10 minutes. They can do it themselves, or they can designate somebody to make the presentation on their behalf. Thank you, Jason. Um, Tiffany W. asked, will all cannabis businesses in the city be inspected? And if so, will we receive notice of the date and time of the inspection or have an appointment? It depends on the type of inspection. So generally, the initial inspection to get temporary approval or the final inspection to qualify for the operating permit, those are scheduled by the applicant in advance. Um, for compliance inspections or responding to complaints that may be associated with the business, you're not going to get advance warning. Um, you may find out the morning of or DCR staff may just show up. Um, it really depends on the type of inspection. Our next question from Philip A. Can an operator who passes the initial inspection from DCR start business activity? In and of itself, no. An operator has to have at least temporary approval and an active state license to engage in a commercial cannabis activity. And you also have to be in compliance with building code, fire code, health code, et cetera, to lawfully operate. If it turns out that you don't have the necessary permits, those other agencies could cite you for non-compliance, which could ultimately be referred to DCR and result in the suspension or revocation of the license. Um, this next question from Mike S. is a little long, so bear with me. And please let me know if you need me to repeat any part of it, Jason. Um, can you please discuss what type of DCC modifications become streamlined once a licensee has an annual license with DCR? And they give an example. If a licensee wants to relocate and has submitted an app annual application to DCR, that is then approved for the new location and the licensee ceases operations at the original location, would DCC allow the licensee to update their license premises address to the new location, which has an annual license from DCR, or will the licensee need to submit a whole new application from scratch to DCC? I don't know. Um, we've talked to the Department of Cannabis Control about what their modification process will look like. Um, their statute does give them the ability to relocate an annual state license or a state provisional license under certain circumstances. One of those circumstances does involve whether or not an environmental review has been conducted for the location. Um, what I've been told is they would consider a modification to the existing record, similar to the way DCR handles it, where they basically move you from point A to point B. If you've completed both the local annual license process and the state annual license process, it would be more streamlined than if you do not have an annual license. Um, similar to the way DCR handles it is when you go to a new location, you have to meet the application requirements for that location. So if you don't have the annual license at the local or state level, you most likely would have to submit a whole new application and meet the application requirements for that location. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, moving on, a question from Molly P. Is there a July 2023 DCC deadline? 
there, there was a July 2023 DCC deadline. The, the Department of Cannabis Control has been pushing their licensees to transition from provisional licensure to annual licensure. So as part of the provisional renewal process, the DCC required applicants to begin providing evidence that the local jurisdiction um, had initiated or completed the environmental review um, based on the environmental re review type identified by the local jurisdiction. So last year, we had issued draft notices of exemptions to eligible businesses that they could provide as evidence to renew their state provisional license after July 1st of 2023. Our next question comes from Renee R. I have received a letter to hang a notice of hearing. May, many people did not receive that. What is it for and why? Um, and then they add, Usually a notice of hearing is before you open. Why do you need that? And when we have been open for years. So the, the 16 businesses that have received their notice of complete application were sent the posters that the code requires to be posted in a conspicuous place at the business premises location. That is a requirement to notify the public of the community meeting and public hearing dates. So businesses that have been operating with temporary approval may be open, but in order to meet the requirements to receive an annual license, you do have to post that notice at the business premises location so that members of the public know when the community date and public hearing date for your location and application will be. Um, the the poster and the posted notice is tied to the locations that have been issued a notice of complete application. So if you're if the people that you're referring to in the question or other businesses that aren't part of the 16, um, they'll get their poster notice after their applications have been deemed complete and we've started the formal notice process. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Victor D asks. We're a mom and pop delivery only company. Would it be possible to add a distribution license to my portfolio? I would like to be able to package my own flower uh, just for my own company. Would it be possible to utilize the same premises to my retailer's license address or would I need to find another location for a distributor's license? Um, you would have to submit a new record and go through the pre-op review process so that we can do a land use review of the your preferred location to determine of whether or not it's zoned and distanced properly for the activity that you're seeking to add. And then if, if it is, you'd have the opportunity to submit an application for that commercial cannabis activity. Yeah, did we lose you? Can you not hear me? I can hear, I can hear you now. Okay, let me try again. Uh, RELC asks, based on the prior prioritization slide from today's presentation, does that mean applicants who do not have a state license won't have their annual license review until June 2025? No. So... We're, we're prioritizing folks to make sure that um, they'll be in a position to provide the final environmental document to the state to get their annual license. And once we get through kind of the first tranche, we'll have capacity within our process to start moving um, businesses that do not have a state provisional license into the process. So I think Summertime is when we're going to be able to start moving the first set of retail storefronts into the process. And then 
um, for the non the non storefront activity that doesn't have any other retail storefront component to it, um, those will be able to move late spring, early summer. Uh, for a question from Jolyn. Um, we received our notice of community meeting and public hearing. However, we have not yet received our notice of ap complete application for our annual record. Does the notice of community meeting and public hearing start the clock on the 10 days given to retailers to contact their neighborhood council? I would ask a question of the person to, to double check on the DCR website to see if their record is one of the records listed on our public notice page, because those are the folks that we've issued the notice of complete application to. There's going to be an additional 17 businesses added to that page this week, um, and the Department of General Services is going to start to do the mail notice. And we're in the final stages of preparing the posters and everything else to get sent to those businesses. And then there will be a third tranche. But if you are part of the 16 and you did not get the email communication letting you know that your application was deemed complete, I would recommend reaching out to your assigned analyst to make sure that you're listed as a contact on the record um, because those email notifications do go out to the contacts on the record. But when you actually get your notice of complete application, that starts the 10-day clock. Uh, question from Initial L. When will we get DCR staff report to prepare for the commission meeting? Generally, the, the staff report's not going to be transmitted and released until the agenda is finalized, which is 72 hours before um, the commission um, hearing date. So by the end of the business day, on the Monday before the commission hearing date, all of those documents um, that will be before the commission should be posted and attached to the corresponding agenda item. Our next question from Myra D. We are a phase two and have already received a notice of exemption. It has been more than 35 days since the issuance of that notice of exemption. How much longer will we need to wait to obtain an annual license? I, I think um, the, the question is not kind of correctly phrased because a notice of exemption, a final notice of exemption only happens when a decision maker has made the decision to issue an annual license. So unless the director has approved the staff report to issue an annual license and adopted the environmental findings that result in us filing the notice of exemption, he, we have not completed a notice of exemption, nor has one been filed with the county clerk. Most likely you're referring to a draft notice of exemption, which is tied to the documents that we were getting folks so that they could continue to renew their state provisional license while they work towards getting their annual license, their local annual license. Uh, our next question from Denise B. E. When should we be expecting to receive any correspondence regarding our annual license? We have completed all the steps and have been waiting to hear back. I would recommend reaching out to your assigned analyst to see where you are within the process. Our next question comes from Ali R. What month do you project the CEQA completion for a non-social equity and non-provisional license from the state that has been in the DCRQ 
for more than two years for CEQA exemption to be reviewed. I would recommend reaching out to your assigned analyst um, because the the question here is saying that they're they're a non-provisional licensee, which means that they don't have a state provisional. So the the question would be kind of for them, do they have a complete local application? Have they met the record re you know renewal requirements for 2024 and got a gotten us a copy of the expanded form 4013 form, the 24 page form, and paid the associated fees because that's what analysts are doing their review of for um, the annual license application packages. Thanks, uh, Jason. The next question also comes from Denise B. Does the annual license replace the temporary approval? No. The temporary approval and the annual license are different types of licenses. Temporary approval is a, a local form of license that allows you to operate a business. So if you have if you get an annual license, you also have to have either temporary approval or an operating permit to engage in that commercial cannabis activity plus whatever license you have at the state level. So if you get an annual license, then you would have the ability to request a final inspection. And if you pass the final inspection, get your operating permit. Um, but if you don't have an operating permit, you need to have temporary approval um, to satisfy the local license requirement. Thank you, Jason. Our next question comes from Jen M. Uh, if we received a notice of complete application but need to relocate, how do we stop the process from moving into annual? You would have to, I mean, at this point, you're already in the annual license application process. So if you've lost site control, then you could submit the business premises surrender form um, which will result in the abandonment of the corresponding record. If the record has not previously been refiled, it may be eligible for refiling at your preferred location. Um, but if it has been abandoned previously, it's already been refiled, the abandonment of the record um, will not allow you to further refile because a refiled application may not be eligible for further refiling. So it it comes down to a business decision about whether or not you can move forward at your current location or you no longer have site control and then you are obligated to submit the business premises um, surrender form. And then, you know, that would result in the abandonment of the record because you can't move forward at the location. And then depending on whether or not the record can be refiled would depend on the record history. Uh, our next question from Luis B. Is the public convenience or necessity process annual application currently open for retail? The public convenience or necessity PCN process is not currently open. The folks that initiated the PCN process last fall, um, their files are pending before the city council. And then for the retail storefront, annual applications, businesses that participated in the phase three retail round two lottery and got selected um, have the ability to submit their pre-apps and or annual license applications, um, but we're not accepting any new applications at this time. Our next question comes from Leo. Is there an ex expedited process for pre-application? Not at this time. Uh, let's see, we have one final question uh, from MS. Can multiple representatives be afforded two minutes to speak on behalf of the applicant? 
for the community meeting, um, the public comment oral testimony is just on a first come first serve basis. So, you know, yes, multiple people can come and be afforded the two minutes provided they show up early and get in line. For the public hearing before the Cannabis Regulation Commission, the applicant or their representatives are afforded up to 10 minutes and any comment outside of the 10 minutes afforded to the applicant as part of their item could be done as part of um, the general public comment process. And then, you know, again, folks would have to um, identify themselves for general public comment or item specific public comment to give that comment. So yes, more than just the applicant could be afforded the opportunity to provide oral testimony. And then the way to do it will just be whether it's a community meeting or the Cannabis Regulation Commission meeting. All right, thank you, Jason. I think we are uh, ending at a good time. There are no more questions and um, it's almost it. I appreciate it, thank you so much. And then um, for members of the public that have had their applications deemed complete, we will be sending um, a, an updated communication that has some of the text from the slides today that kind of outline the next steps for the retail storefront businesses. And then um, for the next tranche of businesses that are gonna be deemed complete, um, your letter plus your posted notice um, will be going out this week. And then of course, um, you will have to reach out to the neighborhood council to offer to meet with them. And then we'll get the other notice requirements posted on the website and mailed out in accordance with our calendar. So we look forward to continuing to help applicants and licensees navigate through this process. And we hope that this was helpful for everybody. Good afternoon.